Hi there, welcome to the 2402 lecture on chapter 27, the reproductive system. Crowd goes wild. All right, now we're starting off with meiosis. You guys studied mitosis before, so I'm gonna go with some basic knowledge uh, is held by you, but we'll explain it afresh for meiosis. So this is a cell division, which unlike mitosis produces haploid cells. So haploid cells are symbolized with that uh, N right there, uh, whereas diploid are 2N. Normal body cells are diploid, which means that you've got uh, pairs of chromosomes, right? So you've got 23 pairs of chromosomes. Uh, those pairs, half come from your mother and half come from your father, uh, and then when you go on to reproduce, you're gonna create either sperm cells or egg cells that have half of your chromosomes. So they're only gonna have one half of the chromosomes. And it turns out they're not gonna get either the mother's set or the father's set, but a mix. So let's talk about it here. Uh, meiosis consists of two divisions. They're conveniently named meiosis one and meiosis two. Meiosis one, first one, is called uh, sometimes the reduction division because you divide the number of chromosomes from the diploid state to the haploid state. And there are phases, just like there were in mitosis, and they have the same name, so that's convenient. Uh, prophase one would be prophase of meiosis one, but you can just say prophase one. And uh, as you can see from this list, it's kind of complicated. The rest of the steps are very simple, and I'll do some little drawings here after I get done explaining it. So, in this little small picture over here, you see that uh, prophase one is up here, and there's a big list of stuff, and they show the chromosomes together, and none of that makes any sense, so I'll try to describe it. Um, the nuclear envelope, envelope, which was around the chrome, around the nucleus, starts to dissolve, because if what you're going to do is you're going to split the cell, you can't have a nucleus in the middle, you're going to have to split those chromosomes. A structure called a spindle forms, and a spindle is these little kind of cables that go from centriole to centriole. And what they do is they eventually attach to these chromosomes at their center point, the cent called the centromere. Uh, you can hear, if you're clicking in the background, that's my Lucy, my old dog, just doing laps. And if you hear clunking in the background, that is my turtle clunking around in her cage. Or tank. Um, all right, so the spindle forms. Replicated chromosomes condense. So what they were before they, before you entered this division is they were just kind of filamentous. They were spread out stuff. And that spread out stuff's called chromatin. I'm not going to have you remember that, but it's kind of a spread out version of chromosomes. So they condense down to a sort of a small package with familiar X shapes <clears throat> because they're easier to move around that way. Now, prophase one is complicated because this is where you get a lot of genetic recombination. And the process of them getting together is called synapsis. So synapsis is they come up next to each other. It involves the homologous chromosomes, the pairs, right? So chromosome pair one, chromosome pair two, and homologous chromosomes in this case, the term homologous means that they have the same genes. So all of the genes from your mother's chromosome one and your father's chromosome one are the same. Now they may be different versions of those genes, which we'll learn about in genetics later, but they are the same genes. So chromosome one might have the, a gene for eye color but it'll be on both of them in the same spot. So they come together, process called synapsis. When they are together, there is four total copies of the DNA because each of these guys are replicated chromosomes, which means that, as I'll draw, each of these X's has two copies of the DNA. So the green X here's got two copies, the purple X has two copies, so a total of four copies. Tetra means four. Uh, and tetrad is what they call that formation. The process of genetic recombination in this case is called crossing over. So crossing over equals genetic exchange between the chromosomes. Another complicated word here. The places where they touch are called chiasmata. So that contact point where those genes are going to be exchanged is called a singular it's chiasma, plural chiasmata. And so you've, if you've got 23 chromosomes, you're going to have hundreds and hundreds of different spots where they these 23 chromosomes exchange uh, uh, genetic information. So uh, crossing over is the process of genetic exchange. It occurs at chiasmata, those contact points, 
it when there's four copies of the DNA, two replicated chromosomes, you've got a tetrad. Them moving together is called synapsis, and homologous chromosomes have the same uh, same genes on them. And here I said between the paternal and maternal chromosomes of a given pair. And I will draw that. Now the next page has, you think it's going to be complicated, next page has all the rest of meiosis. And there's much shorter stuff. And you can go back to this image and check it out. You can see that what they kind of look like at those different stages. Uh, but metaphase one, the homologs line up at the equator and they line up paired. And here you see right there, side by side, in twosies, twosies. Uh, anaphase one, they start to be pulled apart. And here you see it right there. There they are being pulled apart towards those poles. Uh, telophase one, you've got the signature cleavage furrow forming. So right there is that little dent. That is the cleavage furrow, and it's caused by a cytoskeletal element, microfilaments, that kind of constrict the middle and eventually pinch it into two different cells, left and right in this case. And then cytokinesis occurs afterwards. Uh, uh, you know, sometimes you'll see cytokinesis being included in, my in meiosis or being a step afterwards. I don't really care. Oh, I got an alert. Check it out. Um, but uh, either way, it's cell division. So that's when you actually get the cells completing that division and forming two new cells, which then go on to meiosis 2. So what we end up with after meiosis 1 are two haploid cells. You might say, well, okay, let's see. Uh, in this case, we've only got four chromosomes, right? Right here. Uh, if you want to picture 23, go ahead. But, I mean, 23 pairs, go ahead. But here we got two pairs, four chromosomes. By the end of meiosis one, each cell only has a total of two chromosomes. So we've gone from four, the diploid number, to two, the haploid number, thus the reduction division. Go and do meiosis 2, and meiosis 2 is pretty much exactly like mitosis, except you're using haploid cells instead of diploid cells. So what, what you do is you maintain the chromosome number uh, during this division. You're starting haploid, you end up haploid. And these steps are very similar. Prophase 1, oh, oh, the nuclear envelope dissolves. What did I do? What did I do? Okay. Uh, and spindle forms, uh, metaphase 2, the chromosomes line up, this time single file. So if you look down here, they're just end to end. So you'd have 23 of these guys in a row if this were full cell. Uh, anaphase two, they chromosomes are pulled apart again, but now what we're doing is we're pulling apart the chromosome itself. So the chromosome has a left half and a right half, and these two halves are called chromatids, sister chromatids. So this green chromosome's got a left half that's one sister chromatid and a right half that's another sister chromatid. So in anaphase two, they're kind of pulled apart, where you get the left half, one sister chromatid goes left, one sister chromatid goes right. But as soon as they're apart, and no, not part of the same chromosome, they they are called a chromosome. So they are they're called, as you see here, an unreplicated chromosome. Later during uh, DNA replication, you're gonna you know you you make a double copy, but that's always right before division. And we started off. Uh, with replicated chromosomes. So now we've got these unreplicated chromosomes being pulled towards the poles. Telophase 2 happens the same way. You get a cleavage furrow, uh, yada yada, nuclear envelope reforms, and then cytokinesis again finishes, giving you four uh, daughter cells total if you followed them all the way through, right? And those are the cells that go on to become either sperm cells or egg cells. So this is the process, meiosis of producing gametes. And now, let's see if I can draw some pictures. So here we go. Uh, I'm going to kind of draw this here just to, so you can maybe visualize it a little bit better. Um, and I'm gonna, let's see. So here's your starting cell. Whoop, there it is, right? And you've got some chromosomes in it. And I don't have a red and green pen. I'm not going to mess around with that. But uh, but there they are, they're condensed. So you might see something like this in prophase one with the cleavage with the spindle fibers extending like this, right? And then metaphase one, they're gonna line up kind of side by side, right? And there, I kind of drew them like that already, but let's just suppose if we had more chromosomes, you could see them all lined up better like this, right? So they're lined up on this equator, this kind of imaginary line right here. Anaphase one, 
they're going to be kind of the cell kind of stretches a little bit and these chromosomes get pulled towards the poles they're being pulled along by these on these spindle fibers towards the opposite poles until you get to telophase one like this where now you'll get two new cells then you're going to send each one of these guys through that meiosis two which i don't really have to draw but let's just look at a close-up of prophase one uh, if you this is prophase one up close you might see it like this like the chromosomes are going to be here's a big chromosome and here's another chromosome and they're all they're touching each other so what this is is just two chromosomes poorly drawn all up in personal in each other's business right so each of this the process of them moving together is called synapsis this whole feet structure here is called a tetrad this little spot right here that is a chiasma and at this point crossing over occurs here so by the time you're done and these chromosomes go their own separate ways you have uh, you have chromosomes that aren't the same as they were briefly going back to this picture uh, if they're if they're blue if they're all green or all purple when they start down here it's kind of a small picture I apologize but it's pretty much as big as it could get on this page and if you look right there there's a little purple end on this guy and a green end on this guy so they come away from this exchange and during prophase one not being the same chromosomes they started off so when you produce sperm cells or egg cells you're gonna make a sperm cell or an egg cell that has 23 chromosomes but they are not only not all your mothers or all your fathers, there's going to be a mix. They actually line up here independently. So you can have purple on one side, green on the other, vice versa. They're not really purple and green, but that's just it. Identify them. So not only are you just not going to get all purple or all green chromosomes to your sperm or eggs, you're going to get chromosomes, 23 chromosomes that are not all purple or all green. They're going to be a mix. Each chromosome is going to have a bit of the other parent's chromosome mixed together. So this is all for sexual reproduction. And sexual reproduction, the real amazing part about it is that how much variation you can generate in just one generation of reproduction. All right. That's a little long, but thanks for hanging out.